Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Day Hutt. Uh, we're going to revisit uh, a topic we did uh, perhaps a few weeks ago. I'm not sure when all these will appear in which order yet uh, with the filming and editing and all that. Uh, but we're going to take a look at a photoresistor. And with that photoresistor, we're going to have a very simple project here that will give practical application to that photoresistor. And that practical application is an auto dimmer. Um, very, very simple to use, uh, program, etc. And I thought it'd be a great idea on how to uh, take a, 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 an input device and create an output with it and tie the two together. Um, so with that, we're going to start out. First thing we'll do... Uh, is look at uh, the fritzing wiring diagram. But again, I want to mention that uh, two of the primary topics in this video we've already covered in depth. So I'm going to gloss over that in the code. And that would be uh, reading analog to digital signals, as well as very specifically the photoresistor. And uh, the other one is working with PWM to control the brightness of the LED. I'll provide links to those videos in this the description down below. Here you can see the layout, uh, really, truly quite straightforward and simple. Um, we're going to uh, read an analog signal from the photoresistor. We'll read that in on uh, the analog to digital channel number one. That just connects to one leg of the photoresistor. Uh, and then we supply 3.3 uh, volts to the photoresistor so that we have a variable voltage coming back to the analog to digital channel input. Uh, for our LED, uh, we're going to need uh, a ground, a path to ground. So I have a wire coming up to the ground channel, coming out of the appropriate leg of the LED. Uh, the positive voltage is going to come from pin number GP15, and that'll be configured as a PWM output, and that'll go through a resistor, in this case a 220 ohm resistor, going into the LED. Now this will be, uh, of course, varying in brightness depending on how much light is hitting uh, the photoresistor. We'll look at the code, but first we'll go ahead and run this so that you get an idea of what all is going on uh, with this project. Now we'll start out running it, and down here on the screen you'll see some data running by. And the most important one is this left column, and that's reading the uh, current value from the analog uh, signal coming from that photoresistor. So. 52,000 some uh, and change. This is going to float quite a bit. You're not going to get a very stable out output out of something like this. Uh, but what we do want to notice is that's kind of our high value. If I cover up the photoresistor, I got my hand over it right now, and we're right around 5,000. So that's the full range of readings coming from the photoresistor. Now, uh, we kind of need to know that in order to have a proportional output for the PWM to control the brightness of the LED. So let's demonstrate that on the output side. Um, I'm going to hold a, a filter over the top of the LED. Hopefully that'll make it a little bit more visible for us uh, while I'm demonstrating this. And you'll see as I put my hand over the photo sensor, it gets brighter, away it gets dimmer. So there you have a very directly coupled, through a microcontroller, uh, auto dimming circuit, uh, taking input from a photoresistor and now putting a PWM signal to control the brightness of the LED. Let's take a look at the code to drive this. Uh, we're going to import a couple libraries. We're going to set up the LED as an object that's a uh, 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 output pin configured as uh, pulse width modulation. And we're going to set the frequency at a thousand. Uh, the photoresistor will be set up as an object, as an analog to digital channel on uh, number one. Uh, then we're going to have a function that will do all the work for us. 
Uh, here's those two numbers we talked about earlier. 5,000 for sensor bottom reading and 59,000 for sensor top reading. That's our full uh, working range uh, for this sensor uh, that is providing an uh, analog feedback. We're going to need to have a shift amount uh, to get rid of this or deal with this 5,000 as our baseline. Now, the thing to, that we're doing here is I'm taking and making this value equal to 0%, this value equal to 100%, and then I will use that percentage uh, through a few simple calculations here, where then I would set the PWM to the sensor reading percentage. And that way, it's a very direct proportional, make things brighter when it's dimmer uh, function. Uh, so we do that calculation, and we just simply set the PWM, and that is it. And uh, from here, I'm printing out uh, the data that's getting calculated or processed in this uh, subroutine. And then finally, we'll return the PWM signal back to uh, the main code. And here you'll see how this is going to be processed, because that's really what we're after, that set PWM. Uh, value. Uh, so the brightness level will be equal to the photoresistor read. We're reading the analog signal here. Then we're going to transform those readings through this function, do all the calculations, and we're going to come back. It'll come back with or return to us the PWM set setting. Then here's our LED PWM. Here we're going to set the duty cycle to that LED PWM, and that will uh, in turn adjust its brightness. And then finally, we'll sleep for just uh, 100 milliseconds to slow the code down. And that's the whole thing for making an auto dimming uh, circuit through a microcontroller and controlled by Python, or technically MicroPython. Uh, but it works out really nice, and uh, you can apply this to a number of different things. Uh, for example, maybe you've got a shed out in the backyard. You want uh, automatic dimmer for a battery-powered uh, light that's out there. You don't want it on all the time, only when it's bright outside. Things of that nature. So hopefully that gives you a handle on how you can utilize a photoresistor in a completed circuit to achieve an end goal of a variable brightness light. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.